So what I did was I um, took a piece of cardboard, the big one that I had, and I cut it and I cut a little piece and I taped a piece on it. And I didn't really do a you know super duper job of taping it. I mean, let's be honest. I didn't do a really super, super job of taping it. But it might hold for a little bit. That's all we wanted to do. We just wanted to hold for a little bit. And then I'm also testing to see how good it picks up. Let's see if I talk right here. How does it sound? If I talk like this, if I talk like this, how does it sound? You know, with me up all close like that, how does it sound if I'm, if I'm like this? Or if I, so when I take it, see, this one spins around. So, so it's like that now. Let's go like that. And it holds to a certain degree. It holds much better than it did when it was, it holds much better than it did when it was, uh, you know, without it. So, all right, let me have. And see, it's kind of cool that I'm actually helping a person in Singapore right now. Kind of cool, huh? So, uh, I'm actually helping somebody in Singapore. Ain't that kind of cool? And, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. What was I talking about? Yeah, doing stuff on the cheap. I just like to do stuff on the cheap. I like to put stuff together, tinker, do stuff on the cheap and just make it work. Because I, I do, one part of me does understand that it's about getting, the, it's about, it's like me and somebody was having this conversation about the quality of music. The quality of music kind of doesn't matter if, the, what matters is that people like it. Now, musicians may hear, you know, the music sounding like this and this. Sound. Forgot what I was talking about. Forgot, completely forgot what I was talking about. But one thing I do notice, I got to hold the key down. I just can't pop the key no more on this for some reason. I should just go do, 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 between the um, cameras. Now I got to like hold it down and stuff. See this camera, I usually like it to have it a little bit more like that. And down some, you know, I like for my head to be at the top, you know, closer to the top and the upper one third. And not even, even, I don't mind the water bottle being there. All right, that looks like, is it done? Did it finish? Did it finish? I'm helping the person in Singapore. Singapore. See, and I got my camera set up so that you can't see anything. See, I got, and long as I keep the camera still, I got them blocked. And I can put, eventually I'll, I'll you know, put something cool and funky on there. Yeah, I'll be helping people from all over the world. Not all over the world, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm that person. And then I realized, too, that a lot of people don't get the opportunity to meet people like, you know, that I have and done in life. Like when I go back to Youngstown, you know, the culture is, is limited, when I want to say. Uh, I don't know what the word is. You know, it's like I said, when I, I didn't know what a burrito was until I came out here. I didn't know what a burrito was until I came out here. And then, and then it's funny because you come out here, everybody, you know, those about burritos. It's like burritos is like air, you know, but when you're back home, it's like, what's a burrito, you know, tacos, you know, who eats tacos? You know, the only tacos we used to get was those Lowry ones and those hard shells and you used to make the meat and it was terrible. I mean, there wasn't no tacos. What the hell was that? What was we eating? We thought we was eating tacos. We wasn't eating no damn tacos. I don't know what we was eating. But I tell you, you get that taco. And then I came out here, you learn how to get that Lowry's taco mix. You mix that with your meat. And you go out and get you some flour tortillas or some, I used to love flour tortillas. Then I graduated to corn tortillas. Ooh, suka, 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 suka. And then you get your sour creams and stuff. I had no idea. I had no idea, like, you know, another thing I hear that I, did I, I think I did see a place back in Youngstown, and I'm just using Youngstown affectionately. I'm from Youngstown. I love Youngstown. Y'all know I love that place. Every time I go back there, I talk a bunch of much. I love it there, and it may be because I'm from there. The from part may be very important in me loving the place so much, 
but Youngstown is in me. It's a part of me, the way it smells, the way it is, the way it's built. And I think that I'm industrious like that, but I'm nowhere near as tough as some of them people that I've seen back there. I'm just nowhere near as tough as some of the people, even the women. <laughs> I'm not even as tough as some of the women I've seen back there. Women in my family, in fact. Oh, my God. Woo, them are some tough people. I ain't. I'm like, I quit. <laughs> but, um, and I just like to compare Youngstown because that's, I mean, I could just, you know, take the easy way out and say that's what I know. I know Youngstown. So that's what I'm a, you know, uh, I'm a go to all the time. I got to use that as an excuse. But I like to compare Youngstown as the, you know, because that's the, I don't want to say the lowest because that's not the right word because that is really not the right word. Because Youngstown used to be thriving. Youngstown used to be booming. We had the top, and I, I always one of my favorite things to say is, we had the top, we had the top ten roller coaster in the country there for a while. You know, we had the top ten roller coaster in the world. Wildcat. I mean, everybody came there. Glenn Dorsey. I don't know why we say Glenn Dorsey because I just figured you know, he's like really big. You know, bigger than yeah. you know than just all the um, Smokey Robinsons and James Browns and all that. You know. It's not a comparison, but just more broader audience because of his demographic. He probably may or may not have a broad, more broader audience because of the appeal to his certain ethnic group. Um, you know what? I just had to run an update. I had to run an update. Windows needed to update. The 4K camera wasn't turning on automatically. I had to deactivate it, activate it, deactivate it, activate it, deactivate it, activate it to get it to click on. And it used to do that when it was up there. I used to have it up at this camera, the 4K. I used to have it up there, but it it, it kept. I would always have to take the plug and unplug it and plug it back in because it would always deactivate, and re and I couldn't just you know deactivate, reactivate. I actually had to use the um, um usb plug to switch it so i re restarted i let the update run look like it was for a microsoft network net whatever that's called net thingy but um that very cut so now we're going to see how long this goes and if the pause is going to work if the pause is not going to work two videos cut off in the middle of me giving a, some beautiful soliloquy about how, and I'm gonna try it again, about how um, until I, when, once I realized who I was, what I was and what I wanted to be, I used to have a lot of problems with external sources, be it people or places or events or that. I used to have, a lot of my focus was on what was not right around me until I got myself together. And then that just kind of opened up everybody else to every everybody and everything else to be whatever it wanted to be and how it affected me or didn't affect me. I was talking about Buddhism and the noble truths and all that and how I discovered Buddhism and Buddhism is an atheistic religion. I'm an atheist. And about suffering, the noble truths, how you let everybody suffers to a degree. A person can have a Mount Everest size of suffering on their shoulders and still be happy. That's an extreme case. But that's, if you ask me, that's kind of a good basis of where, how I understood Buddhism because you don't necessarily have to have a, a mountain of suffering. You can have this much. But it's how you handle that that little bit or a lot of bit or whatever. It's how you really let things affect you. Because human beings are resilient. It took me a long time to realize that. That human beings are resilient. They can with anything. There's nothing, I don't think there's nothing that human beings can't do or figure out or go through or suffer through or pain, agony, and just, you know, I just, it's just, I've seen some stuff in my time and I, I and I, and I really, I mean, I have, but, but you know, I've seen some stuff, but nothing. I'm not liking the way this thing is switching or not switching. 
it's not as fast as it used to be. I may have to uninstall and restart, reinstall something. And if I get back over here and this thing isn't recording again, and you can't really tell, see if it's recording again, because it'll just say zero KB. So you really can't say, and it's really not showing up now either, but it better be recording and I better not be doing nothing. Let me just stop. So, and, and I've recorded, this is like my third time trying to rec record this. So maybe the universe is telling me I shouldn't have said it, but until I figured out who or what I was, you know, I had a problem with a lot of things that I may or may not. I had a problem with a lot of things that I no longer had a problem with once I understood who I was and what I was. And I, I relate that all back to my story about Youngstown, how I used to have a problem or be irked or be bugged by certain things in Youngstown, certain practices in the culture. And it could be a lot of that, not only knowing who I was or what I was, it could also be to a degree how much self-fulfilled I, I became or I got or I grew to be or how much how many of my passions I were able to experience or how fulfilled I could be in what I wanted to be because one of the most recent things I've come to the well, recent thing I've come to is I don't think there's anything greater than a human being becoming the person or thing that they want to be and in that journey for me, in that journey, and I guess I'm talking about that now in a, a way, in that journey to get there, a lot of things external to me had a bigger impact on me than maybe they should have. Or maybe I saw something in things external to me that were a part of me that I needed to correct but it was easier. And one thing I say that it is easier for a human being to complain. It's easier for me to tell you the things that, that bug me or bother me or that I don't like. And I understand that. And I realized that if I complain about something three times, I need to do something about it. So complaining is a tool <laughs> if used properly. You know, being irritated is a tool. Just, you know, ah, once, ah, twice, third time, you got to stop and say, what's going on here? You know, something needs to be adjusted. You need to adjust the situation needs to be adjusted. Something, you know, it's, a, it's the degree of suffering, I guess. Again, you can say suffering, complaining, suffering. But I forget where I was going with that, but a, a lot. A lot, a lot, really, a lot had to do with that. A lot had to do with, um, see, it's not changing the way it should. I wonder if I put it over, it better not, if I put it over here, will it change better? Could maybe it could be because of the, um, nope, see, it didn't change. See, I got to hold it. Now, what is that about? See, it didn't change, did it? I got to hold it for too long. I wonder what that's about. I wonder if something needs to be uninstalled, reinstalled. So it used to be like, mm, mm, mm. and now I got to like hit the button and hold it. Like I got to hold it, let it cycle and then, oh, you know, it's not like a real time. It's like it's not being picked up in real time. Let me go and I'm adjust this and see. I'm gonna put this on OBS 64. See if that makes a difference. I got it on OBS 64 now. Nope. See, I just hit it twice, nothing happened. I gotta hit and hold it. Oh, now it's not moving at all. Well, now it's not moving at all. Yeah, something's going on with the program. Something's going on. Let me put it back on all programs. Now, let me put it back on OBS 64. And close that and then click on that. 
Now it's not changing at all. I wonder if I'm locked up again. I wonder if I'm locked up again. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I didn't pause it for crying out loud. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this on all programs. Put it back on all programs, minimize this, and let's see if this changes. Well, now it changed, see that? But it's still not changing as fast as it should. You know, the response isn't there like it used to be. But anyway, I, you know, I'll fix that later. 707, I need to take a break. Um, let me take a break. Let me see if I can pause it. Here's a big thing, if I can pause it. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause it. It didn't pause. Okay, it paused on the second time. It's like it's not picking up the trigger. It's like it's just not picking up the trigger. It's like the trigger isn't happening. So now I'll just go ahead and stop the recording. Or at least I'll try to stop the recording.